now that we have all of the basic parts of the game, we can work on making the entire thing actually look good. I want to start by drawing the Apple graphic, which is going to look something like this. All I really want to do is that the apple should have a proper graphic and on top of that it should also grow and shrink. So we have a bit of an animation in there. None of that is going to be too difficult, let's jump right in. I want to work inside of apple.py and first of all in there. First of all we will need the apple image, which is going to be another surface. So far I have only ever used a single surface, which is the display surface, which is going to be our window. And there can only ever be a single display surface, but on top of that you can create regular surfaces. Those would just be images. Of those you can have as many as you want. Let's say in my case I want to have for the apple one surface that I call surf. And to create a surface you can do it in multiple ways, but in this case we want to import an image. Which we do with pygame.image.load. And now pygame wants to have a path. And this path we are going to create dynamically, because depending on the operating system, let's say your path might be, we want to go up one folder, then we want to go to graphics, and then we want to get apple.png. So that would be a relative path to our apple.png file. Let me actually demonstrate. This is our project folder. At the moment we are working inside of apple.py. From there we want to go up one folder, then we want to go to graphics and in there we have apple.png. This is what we want to import. In my case this path would be perfectly fine, but depending on your operating system it might not, because these slashes might be different. They might look like this or like this. Windows, Linux and macOS all have different standards, which can be really annoying. But fortunately Python has a good way around that, and that is done via the join method. All that the join method wants is the individual folders of our path, which means I can call join, then I want to go up one folder, then the next argument is going to be the graphics folder, and finally we have apple.png. That is all we need, the original path is not relevant anymore, with that kind of system Python is dynamically figuring out which kind of slash we need. And with that we have imported a surface. Now there's one more thing that we need and that is convert alpha after the import. Convert alpha converts the surface, so the PNG, into a file format that Pygame can use more efficiently, which is going to make our game run much much faster. Since our game isn't too hardware demanding, it's not going to make much of a difference, but it's always a good practice to be as efficient as you can. Anyway, with that we have a surface. Now we have to figure out how to use it. Now at the moment we already have a rectangle and then we are drawing this rectangle. The second part we don't want to do anymore, so let me comment it out. Instead what we want to do is get self.displaySurface and then use the blit method which is standing for block image transfer. It's basically a method to put one surface on another surface. And whatever surface we put on the display surface is going to be visible to the player. This method wants to have two arguments, a surface and a position or a rectangle. Both would be fine. The surface in our case would be self.surface, the apple image we have just imported. And for the positioning, we can use the rectangle we have just created. So with that I can run main.py again and we have an apple that still works perfectly fine with the rest of the game. And I should specify when we are using a rectangle we are using the top left point of that rectangle for the position. Although we could change that and we kind of have to because at the moment if this is our current grid and the rectangle we are working with could be this cell with this top left. This top left would be the position we are using for blit, which means our apple is always stuck to the top left of the cell, but we would much rather have it in the center of the cell, which is going to look significantly better. On top of that there's another issue I want to cover, and that is that the apple should grow and shrink. 
so that sometimes we have an apple that gets a bit larger and sometimes we have an apple that gets a bit smaller. This animation makes the game feel much more interactive. And both of those problems we can address at the same time. Although for that, we have to update basically all of that, which means I'm gonna get rid of it entirely and make quite some extensive updates. First of all, we want to create a whole new surface which we want to store in an attribute called scaled surface. To scale a surface like the apple, Pygame has a whole library. You can access that with pygame.transform. And there, for example, you have one method called smooth scale underscore by, which is smooth scaling a surface by a certain amount. It wants to have two arguments. The first one is the surface we want to scale. That would be our apple surface. And for now, let's say we want to scale it up by a factor of two. After that, we have a scaled up surface and now we want to create a new scaled rectangle. And this new rectangle, we are now going to create via this scaled surface, which we can do with self.scaled surface and then get underscore rectangle. This is going to draw a rectangle around this surface, meaning they are going to have the same dimensions. And when you're calling this method, you can specify a center point. Or more specifically, you can specify lots of points. This could also be the top left point. It could be the mid bottom point. All of the points around it. If you look at the documentation, you can see all of the points. But center is the one you are usually going to use. And what we now have to figure out is how to put this center into the center of a cell. If I draw all of this again, here we have a grid and let's say at the moment we are working inside of this cell. So far we always placed the rectangle in the top left, this point. But now we want to place the rectangle squarely in the center. After we have that, Pygame can dynamically figure out the position of this rectangle, which means for the last line we can get self.displaySurface.blit and then self.scaledSurface and self.scaled rectangle. And I guess just to demonstrate what the issue is right now really, I can use the numbers we have specified earlier, which was self.post.x multiplied by the cell size and we also had self.post.y also multiplied by the cell size. This system is not going to work anymore because if I now run main.py, the apple is always in the top left. Okay, bad example. You can see that the apple is always in the top left. So the apple at the moment is here, but it should rather be here. And getting to this point is going to be your exercise. I want you guys to move the center of the rectangle to the center of the cell. Pause the video now and see if you can figure this one out. Righty, back in the code. At the moment, when we are setting the center position, we are still targeting the top left of the cell, which is the major issue. To fix that, all we really have to do is to add a bit of an offset, which is going to be the cell size divided by two. Once again, if this would be a grid we are working in, we last set the center to this point. This is what we had, but now we want to add this offset, which is going to get us to half of the cell on the horizontal axis, which is a much better point. After that, all we really have to do is do the same thing on the vertical axis and then we should be done. And in my case, I'm going to put all of this over multiple lines so you can still see what's going on. For the Y position, I want to have self.post.y plus the cell size plus the cell underscore size divided by two. With that, we should be back in the center. And that is looking really good, and the apple works just fine. That covers most of the logic. The last thing that we are going to need is to make this two for the scaling dynamic. That way the apple grows and shrinks while the game is running. For that, I want to create a separate variable. Let's call it scale. And how this is going to work is we are going to use the sign function, which we first of all have to import. So from math, import sin. Basically a sine wave or sin in Python is a wave that looks something like this. 
where we go up and down up to one and then we go all the way down to negative one after which we're going back to one and negative one and so on these numbers keep on fluctuating forever all of this is going to happen on an axis where the x-axis is going to be time and the y-axis are going to be the y-values we are getting from the curve. Basically what that means is I want to use sine and then measure the time since the beginning of the game, which I get with pygame.time.get underscore ticks. Just to see what we are getting, let me print scale. If I now run main.py and let the game run for a bit, this might be a bit too fast, but you can see we start at basically one or very close to it, then we are going down, then we keep on going down, and at some point we end up at negative one. After which we keep on going up again to less, to larger numbers, this keeps on going until we reach again at nearly one. And these numbers we can use, although we don't want to use them right away. So at the moment the values we are getting going from negative one all the way to one. But for scaling, what we would rather want is a value between 0 0.7 to 1.3. This is the number I want to have for the scaling. That way the apple stays roughly the same, it just grows and shrinks a little. To get these values, I basically want to get 1 plus the sine wave. We would be getting values from 0 to 2, simply because we added 1 to what we had so far. And then... I want to divide the sine value by 3. That way all of this doesn't go from negative 1 to 1, instead we're going from negative 0.3 to positive 0.3. And if we add 1 to that, we go from 0.7 to 1.3, or at least roughly. The specific numbers here really don't matter. Let's try all of that. And if I let the game run for a bit, we can see that the largest number we get is 1.3 and the lowest number we get is roughly 0.7. So that looks pretty good. With all of that, I can get rid of the print statement and use scale for the smooth scale by method. And now we get the apple kind of growing and shrinking, although these numbers go way too fast. To fix that, we simply have to divide the getTicks method. In my case, I divided it by 600. That was just a number that felt good. If I now run this, that looks significantly better. With that, we have covered another part. So next up, we can start working on the snake.